Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at alchemy tonight again. The thing I want to kind of explore a little bit with is using this as an all-in-one instrument. There's a few things I wish alchemy could do that it can't. One of them is I wish that I could use each of the four different sources separately with separate MIDI inputs. Uh, and I haven't found a way to do it. If anybody knows how to do it, let me know. But um, it seems like that they really are not wanting you to work like that. Uh, I would do that for a few different reasons. One, I could have all of the different sounds for a certain group of things in one place and control each of the sources, maybe with a different MIDI track. Can't do it. Um, however, we can still do some creative things with, e with each of the different sources. So what I want to do is look at four really different things here and uh, explore that a little bit. So first, we have source A, which is this beat. And it just plays that. Any note on the keyboard, playing different ones, uh, and, and it doesn't re-trigger. It always just loops. Uh, this was a, the initial preset that I pulled uh, out of that. And part of the reason it can do that uh, is because with this voice, it's set to legato. Um, it has a, like a one voice limit. And so it's always just going to be continuing on with that. So pretty straightforward. Uh, that was the original preset that I pulled up, the 90s dance loop. Then uh, what I did was add in the saw. And it has a little panning modulation coming from an LFO. Uh, it, let's see what I did here with the voices of that. Um, I've got the unison mode turned on with 16 voices, slight detune. I mean, it's just a basic saw stack. Sounds cool. Then for C, I have this arpeggiation. So I have a pulse uh, off as the sound source. And then what I did next was well, I have it through a low pass filter down here in the arpeggiation section, I turned it on for sound source C. And then I just made some additional changes here to the mode, to the rate, to the octave, all of those typical things. But I set it up with the ARP section down here in the effects. Pretty straightforward. And then D, we have another pulse uh, wave shape. But the one kind of clever thing I did with this, if you want to call it clever, is with the voices, uh, I set it to one voice, so it's a mono, and then I said for the priority, only play, if there's more than one note held on the keyboard, only play the one that's lowest. So that's like a pedal on an organ then. If I'm holding a bunch of notes, it's always gonna do whatever the lowest note is. So that way I get a nice bass sound, but it's not, uh, complicated by holding chords, uh, it's not going to add a bunch of notes across the whole keyboard. It just adds that lowest note of whatever I'm playing. So then let's turn on these two. So I get the saw mostly on the right hand and that low note in the, the left. But let's have it be just these two, C and D. And 
And so we get the, that arpeggiation happening with whatever chord I'm doing. These three without the drums. Oop, we got one note that sticks. There we go. Every once in a while, the sustain is sticking on that. And then we added in the drums. So then we have a drum thing happening no matter what we're playing on the keyboard. It's uh, not actually changing or transposing. That's how it was made in here. And so that it just doesn't isn't affected by the pitch, which is cool. Then you can play whatever chords you want and it's going to do all of those different elements mixed together. The last thing we could do is change the volume if we want to mix them a little different. You can see I have this one down minus nine, minus three, um, minus three, and then that one's just at zero. So we can do that. I do have a compressor with the effects here on the drums to beef up the sound a little bit. And then I have a low pass filter on source C and a low pass on D. And so it's it's going to, you can add effects and things. I do also have a reverb, or I did, where are you? There we are. Uh, on C, um, which some of them are sent to with the sends. And so you can actually put reverbs and stuff in the chain. And literally then, the only thing I have out here is a transposer just pulling it down an octave so that I could play it right in the middle of the keyboard. That doesn't change anything. And this EQ came, I think, at some point, but um, it's not doing anything. So everything you hear right now is just an alchemy. <laughs> You could actually come up with kind of a cool thing if you did an arpeggiator here. I don't know how cool it would be, but, it, you know, it could be. Yeah, cool is a relative term sometimes in my world. Okay, so that's what I want to show. Just another look into a different way of using alchemy. In this case, putting all of those elements into one patch the drums the saw pad the bass sound and then the arpeggiated rhythm element all of them into one thing with their little different piece their little different uh, portion of that sound and then you could hear that it's like all of that is just on one track inside logic uh, if you're curious i do have it in ultra mode for quality <laughs> does take up a piece of processing. Uh, however, if we record... And we just record that little bit, and then I turn off record. Let's quantize that so it actually starts. And then it's still seeing that as the in-focus track. So let's just add another track. So you can see it's a lot less processing when it's not a live input. Okay. Cool. Hope you enjoyed this little look at another way of using alchemy. Uh, we're going to do a few more of this type of thing this week as we get some bigger videos in the works. Uh, we got some big plans to do some kind of cool presentation type videos with a lot more information, really focused, 
but I want to keep some of these smaller ones happening at the same time. See you later.